everyone, Anita here and welcome to the very first video of 2017's Inktober. Ah, I'm so happy that it's finally done. Um, I did not enjoy it in the slightest. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm joking. I've enjoyed it a little bit. Um, still not... Yeah, let's put it this way. I was so intimidated by starting this series that I was more stressed than I actually enjoyed the process. Um, so I'm hoping that's going to get better. I mean, already after this first piece, I know that I can definitely paint with ink. Maybe not perfectly, but who, hey, you know, what can you expect after one piece? But that whole intimidation feeling is gone. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it's gonna go a bit faster than today. Because um, whenever I don't like to do something, I tend to push it away you know, to the last second. And even though this morning I got up and I sat down immediately without even eating breakfast, getting my coffee, nothing, uh, I sat down to paint it because, as I mentioned, I'm a little bit under the weather. And I knew that um, just as the time progresses during the day, I will be getting more tired, I will be feeling more sick. And, you know, it's better to just have these things done early on days like that. Um, but of course, you know, it took me forever to finish, even though I have two hours of recorded footage, I was sitting way longer than I probably should have um, finishing this piece. But I've learned a lot and um, it's, it's time, this time was not wasted, so <laughs> I'm happy in, in that one thing. So as you can see here, um, normally whenever I do some kind of inking or anything really, painting in general, I tend to keep my paper in a vertical position so that you guys have better time um, watching the video. But I kind of gave up on this. Whenever it comes to inking uh, or using any kind of pen, I don't have that problem with um, paint, but with inking, with pens, with pencils, I need to have, I need to be able to move my paper um, just to have that good angle um, to, to make the line nicer is just, for me, it's very important. So as you can see here, at some point I gave up trying to do this vertically and started moving the paper around um, just to have it how I needed it for the, for the good angle. Also, uh, I'm sorry for my head getting into shots. I didn't realize it was happening until I have actually started editing this footage. So yeah, just, um, mm -hmm, yep, yeah, there will be my head probably in every single shot. Um, the reason for that is this picture is very small. It's a uh, less than A5, and uh, um, I'm actually I have to say that perhaps next time I will skip um, the inking because, as you can see, there is nothing really fancy. Although, please let me know in the comments if you want me to continue it. I will because I like you guys a lot and uh, I want you to be happy. But um, if you don't mind me skipping it, tell me as well because <laughs> it's just. So much easier if you can really stick your nose in the paper, you know, quote unquote, <laughs> than just trying to, to do it from afar. So here I'm starting the painting. Um, and, um, you know, when I started, when I got the idea of doing Inktober, um, it all seemed so simple. Uh, you know, just thinking, oh, I'm going to use black ink because I want to go proper. You know, I've never done Inktober. First time, let's do it properly, um, with black ink only. And then the closer the day came and I was thinking, oh, how I'm going to paint this, how I'm going to um, get the, the process going, uh, how I'm going to make it more, you know, nice for you guys. After all, you have to sit through 30 of those videos. <laughs> 31, actually. And um, the more I was realizing, basically, during that time, that I really don't know anything about ink. I don't know how to approach painting with ink. I mean, I've done maybe two pieces in my whole uh, inking watercolor uh, career. I did, I did two ink pieces and they were mostly for fun. You know, I just had a specific idea in mind and that's what I've done. And, you know, and here I have to, at least that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do my regular illustrations, but with ink. Um, but as you know, I rely very, very deeply on, on color to on color and detail to have my illustration interesting. At least that's what appeals to me the most. So I've never done black and white before. There was always some color. 
And so the more I was thinking about it, the more intimidated I got. Um, so in the end, of course, I decided to treat ink as I would watercolor and see how far I can get with that. You know, you have to start something. So I've decided to start with the with the basics, with things I knew. So I will treat ink for now as watercolor. And so I started with my regular flat washes and oh my gosh, ink is so really pigmented. <laughs> I just dipped my um, the, the end of my paintbrush in ink and added just, I wanted to add just a teeny weeny bit in water and all of a sudden it was black. So black. <laughs> so that was a bit surprising. That's how that's how much of a noob I am. Um, <laughs> so I started with flat washes uh, because I like flat washes in ink. They may ink makes the perfect flat washes. Just something I absolutely love, and it's so flat actually that at some point I've stopped um, trying it, trying to make the ink as smooth as possible because it was too smooth. It just I needed some texture in it, <laughs> just a minimal texture, anything. Um, so this whole process really is experimenting how far I can get with, um, with ink. And also I don't have really, I'm not really paying that much attention to, um, to the value, you know, to making sure that some colors are, <sighs> how do I explain this, um, without having the, the background knowledge with specific words in mind. Basically, when you are painting only with one color, you are going to need to have a difference in value between different washes. Uh, things need to be, the contrast needs to be there <laughs> for, for your picture to be visible. I don't do it. I don't pay attention to that in my regular watercolors. Um, I just don't think about it. I don't need it. Um, well, sometimes I do, but I don't really think about it um, consciously, I suppose. I just paint and, and that's it. And here, as you can see, even though I think <laughs> that I'm adding some value, some some contrast between some elements, it's all the same, you know, all the same flat color. Um, of course, in my mind, I was thinking that I want to have the background black. And so I, I can't really go that dark in the foreground. Um, I will have some pieces, of course, later where I have a lighter background and then we'll see how I go, <laughs> how it, you know, how it goes with just, uh, with not having that in the back of my head that the background needs to be black. I can't go over the top with the, with the contrast. Um, but I'm struggling at this point a little bit because everything seems so flat to me and, um, you know, normally I would add color. Um, for example, if, if I made the hat darker, I would make sure that the color was lighter, uh, for example, on the hair, not necessarily value, but I would just make, let's say, let's say I wanted to make the hat gray, I would use a nice contrasting color, but not necessarily the value. <laughs> so I think that this whole process, the, the 31 days, I keep saying 30, uh, so forgive me, I know it's actually 31. Um, but this whole process, I think, will be a big, um, just practice with, with basic tonal value. I don't even know if that's how you call it. You know what I mean? Basically picking, making the contrast visible, uh, within the painting. And I'm actually quite excited about it because it's something I've never done and who knows how it's going to affect my watercolors in the future. I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm quite, I'm really, really curious to, to see how this uh, monthly practice is going to affect my future paintings. Um, but now I just keep adding colors very, very hmm, carefully, I think would be the good word, because I was afraid to go over the top. And that's something I do also in watercolors when I'm not sure where I want to go with the painting. Um, I also tend to go with very thin layers, building up the color and the intensity uh, slowly, so I can always stop. I don't have, I don't mess it up. In this case, of course, I wasn't sure what I was doing, so that's why I was a bit, you know, I was hesitating, hesitating. Jesus, um, I, I can't speak. Obviously, my throat is already starting to hurt. <laughs> this is going to be interesting for you guys. 
So here I'm adding a little bit of a ground. Um, I felt that this character was not grounded enough. Uh, I didn't actually plan adding anything uh, under the plants, but I need it. I need that minimum, you know, setting in my illustrations. I really can just draw a character. I need to have a setting. Uh, and so at this point, I was I was really reluctant to add anything more to the um, to the character itself, and I figured perhaps if I add the background uh, to see how the character stands against the darker background, then I will be able to decide whether or not it needs more shading, or you know what I mean. <laughs> so here I'm um, adding the flat black background. Uh, I'm not a big fan actually of adding black ink in big washes. Uh, I think it's because I'm spoiled with uh, black gouache. Uh, black gouache is the most velvety, beautiful black uh, matte finish that you can get. Uh, I just absolutely love black gouache. And so when I was adding the black ink that's a bit shiny, of course, I, I don't know, I didn't really enjoy it that much. It came out good, but I, in the back of my head I was constantly thinking, oh, if I only could use black gouache, it would have been so much nicer. <laughs> and uh, this will probably also be the last time I'm just uh, the first and last time I'm filling um, such a big area with just flat color, um, especially if it's just black, because honestly, I think it was it's pointless to the video itself. Plus, it was a nightmare for me to fill um, because I had to keep my head away from the paper. And I don't know, I, I'm thinking that perhaps it's time to get, um, to go and check my eyes. I am having problems seeing those really tiny um, details from, <laughs> not really afar, but just, you know, from sitting up. I really need to have my, like, what I'm saying, you know, nose to the paper to really get those details good and, and, and tighten where they should be. And so here I was, I was so nervous. I was so, um, just, just I, I, nervous is probably the best word. Um, because I was so afraid that I'm going to mess it up and I didn't have as much control because I had to stay away from the paper. Um, but I don't know. I just really wanted to record this. Um, this is the first video. I, I wanted to see what was necessary, what was not necessary. I don't think that recording me filling the big area with black again is necessary. But once again, just let me know in the comments if you would like me to do keep doing this. Perhaps I will just use a different camera angle for that. Um, because the overhead shots are huh, just a bit tiring <laughs> to finish. So what I've actually done after I was done I was done with this layer. It looks really nice and smooth from here, but once I came closer to the paper after I recorded this, turned off the camera and came closer to the paper, I've noticed all those little uh, hmm, impurities. <laughs> I don't know, just little mist spots that I didn't see at all. Um, and, you know, I'm actually thinking because I've never had that problem before. It's something that I started noticing over the past few months. And I'm thinking perhaps it's time to look into... Um, the glasses um, situation. <laughs> I don't know. I've never worn gla glasses, so I don't really have problems um, with with vision. Just you know that one little detail. Um, and yeah, and, and just look. I, I keep filling that space. <laughs> so many details. Initially, I wanted to li leave a little white frame around every single um, element of the picture. But that, I don't know, it felt better without it. It just felt like it was all um, one picture, you know, without it being a... How, do, how would I say it? Without just having that frame. That frame is a bit more... Uh, like if it was pasted on top, I like cut from somewhere else and pasted on top. Sometimes I like to do this, but in this particular case, I wanted to have a nice, really... Just an illustration. Um... And I have to say that it really helped me of having that background. I could immediately see what needed to do, like more work. Um, and at that point, I was already so tired and I felt a little bit more 
comfortable using ink. And I've also noticed what I was talking about before that I don't necessarily want everything to be absolutely flat and perfect. And so I just took my um, water brush and I started adding lines, you know, just adding a little bit of shading. It's still not exactly what I wanted it to be. I think I could have gone even further with the contrast between, you know, elements. But as for the first painting like that, I think it's, I did a good job. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually really, really happy with the results. So that's, that's saying something uh, in my case, because I was so nervous. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, the, on, the one big problem I had with it in, in the case of this character is the wreath of um, leaves that she has around her hat uh, because as you can see there are some um, chestnuts around it in my head this was like a full wreath and this whole time I was painting I was thinking how am I going to add the feeling of you know leaves changing colors with just black ink and, and just, you know, the, the different shades of, uh, of gray. And uh, I think I've actually came out with a nice solution. I've added a little bit of uh, just black plain ink to the, um, like a wet on wet wash, I suppose. Um, and then I've just added a little bit of, um, like I've painted half of the leaves and a bit of darker color just to add a little bit of interest. And then I've added, um, Oh my goodness, how do you call them? The uh, vines? <laughs> the little spine that the leaf has and the veins. Oh, the veins, yes. Um, and I think uh, it actually came out really nicely. Perhaps not the best I could have done, but you know, it's um, it will be a long process to learn the limitations of ink. And when, the more I paint, the more I will learn what I can do with it. So at this point, I started adding... Um, the patterns I've had in my head that uh, the scarf would have a pattern, the basket and the, her underwear because she actually, these are not pants, she's wearing those big rubber shoes and then um, like drawers, like those big balloony <laughs> drawers. <laughs> um, so those three will have would have patterns. Uh, initially I wanted to have them a lot more detailed but as I've said, I was running a little bit late uh, compared to what I was planning initially. And so I've decided I'm going to just make it a little bit simpler uh, and just add simple stripes to the scarf, uh, some little hearts <laughs> to the drawers, and then just a few um, things that just, you know, for the pots, so a little bit of pattern on the pots, um, of course, the basket. just. A little bit not not as much as I wanted and perhaps that's actually a good thing because um, I think if I've added even more then the background will be completely clashing with the whole picture and here I'm already using the white gel pen uh, which means that I will be starting on the background soon I've seen a one of beautiful painting um, on Pinterest with like in Inktober ink piece there was this cat and it had just very detailed um, white outlines of different plants uh, in the background. And I thought it was such a fun thing to do, uh, so I wanted to use it. Uh, but when I started drawing those turnips and the little plant, I hated it. It was so ugly, I felt it was just, it was just so bad. And I immediately regretted it, but of course I had to go with it. I had to go with it. You, you just have to, because the only two choices I had was either to go with it or to just paint over it with black. And um, I'm really happy that I actually went with it because um, that's something I've noticed over the years, <laughs> over, over the paintings and, and videos I made that sometimes even when you hate something and you think it looks just disgusting uh, if you actually repeat it over the page it's usually with patterns it looks like you've meant it it looks like it was done on purpose and all of a sudden it makes more sense uh, once I've added the white details to the other side of the painting it just become more balanced and I loved it so yeah 
that's my painting. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Here's a closer look on it, um, at it, sorry. Uh, here you can see a little bit more the... Um, a little bit more... reflective ink. It's not as smooth as the gouache would be, but it's still decent. Um, I'm actually, you know, it was stressful, but I'm very happy with how the picture turned out. Um, I couldn't have wished for a better first day, so... <sighs> There it is. Thank you so very, very much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow for another witch. Bye!